Hi. So, a while back, someone had asked me if I could do a tutorial on the Nifty Knitter Loom series, and, um, I just haven't gotten around to it, and it's been a couple months. I forget what the user, what the person's username was, but I will post it somewhere on the screen, but yeah. Um... How I do it is slightly different than in the directions that came in the box, so yeah, I hope that this is helpful for those that get the Nifty Knitter Loom series. There are four sizes, and I'm just, this is the only one that I have available that's empty, so yeah, let's get started. You're going to want to grab some yarn. I don't think it really matters what kind of yarn, but the box said to get to think it's medium weight. I could be wrong. But yeah. Just take the what I do is I take the end of it and I will you there's these little knots, little hooks at the end type thing. They're not hooks, but little peg at the end. And when I first start, I usually tie the end of the yarn around that, so when you first start, it doesn't come off. I just do a single thing like that. And then, what you do first, when you start out, you basically just... I wrap it around this first peg here, around once, and then I go on the outs on the inside of the next next one, doesn't matter which side. Then I do a figure eight over and then the neck the next one over and I just keep doing a figure eight all the way down. I, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I just keep doing a figure eight around and around from side to side until I get all the way to the other end. And then when it gets all, all the way to the other end, I just wrap it around there. Before I go any further, um, I'm going to go back to where we started. And I am going to undo the little... It's not even a knot, it's just a single, whatchamacallit. But I'm going to take the end that was knotted... And I am going to put it in a knot around where we started on the first peg so it doesn't unravel as you go along. Because I experienced that with the first thing I made with this is I didn't knot, knot it around the first time and it completely unraveled. So I just... I'm going, if you can see right there, I'm just going over and under, pulling through, and just tightening it so it doesn't unravel later on. Now back to this end. We're gonna, we wrapped it around there, and then we wrapped it around the last peg. And then we're going to go back in the opposite direction. And we're going to make an X. We're going to cross in the opposite direction to where it's making X's. Like that. Because it'll make the fab make the, um, whatever it is you're making a little stronger. At least, that's my opinion. So, you're going to want to make, see the difference? You're going to want to make an X when you're going back the opposite direction, all the way back.
it can be easier when you if you have if you use different colors but we'll get to that later so you're gonna do that all the way to the end And I am going to go all the way back for a, th a third pass. Again, doing crisscrossing in the opposite direction. This can, it can be kind of confusing, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. Because you'll notice what direction you're going in and what direction you need to go in. I also find it helpful if you push down the first two passes that you did because it'll make it easier later on. Now that we've gotten to the third pass, we are going to take the, ah, I can't get it, we're going to take the needle, this needle that comes with it, the hook, focus, we're going to take the needle that comes with it, the hook, and we are going to take the, grab the first row that we did, if I can get it. We're gonna go in from the top from the first row that we did with the hook and then pull it over the top of the of the peg so it stays. See? And then we're gonna push the what's there down and then go to the next peg. Go to this next peg here go to the bottom row our, our initial row go o put the hook on over on top of the strand of the yarn pull a little bit and pull it over and then push the other two rows down I, same thing with the next row grab the first initial row pull out over push down and you're going to keep doing that all the way down the row. You might have a little difficulty at first because they're all bunched together, but you'll get the hang of it. 
does it's okay if you mess up a little bit you can always start over it may seem a little tight but that's normal so you're gonna keep doing this all the way around until you're done if you accidentally grab a top the top row you're just gonna put it back where it was and then keep searching for the bottom row there we go finally got it and you're gonna keep it doing doing it all the way around so as you can see I've switched to another one to speed up the process a little bit you can see that I've been working on this one for a while and and as you can see I always have three rows going so when I when I'm done with the bottom row I just do the um, figure eight thing again so we constantly have three rows I don't know if you can see what I'm doing or not because I'm looking at the screen upside down here but um I'm always going over pulling up putting the needle in, pulling up and over, pushing down pulling up, over, and pushing down pulling up, over, pushing down once you get the groove of it, it's pretty easy so you can't really complain and it's after a certain point it becomes, t for me, it becomes a kind of mindless type of thing so once you're done with the row you're gonna take the thing, the string again, figure eight, all the way across in the X fashion as you always do. You're gonna, you're going to want to keep on switching back and forth, and so you always have that X pattern in opposite directions it, it gets easier as you go along I find because with the in, when you initially start it's hard to get it going and then pull th you're gonna wanna hold the loose end so it doesn't come loose like that so it's a two-handed process obviously and then pull over to secure it and then start all over again up and over up and over all the way across now you may be wondering how to switch colors I just will snip off I'll just cut where I want to stop with the previous color and then take my next color which I'm doing red and blue for this one I'll take my next color tie it to the end of the previous color and just keep going so that's all I do and you're gonna keep going until you get to the end and in in future video, I will show you how to finish off one of these.
It's pretty simple. Again, it's different than in the directions that come with the package. So, yeah, the reason why I always have the three rows going is because... Because if you do just the two rows that the direction... the um, manufa ma the manufacturer directions tell you, it's going to be... It's going to be very see-through, and it's going to be really just not... It's going to fall apart. Whereas with this, it's a lot warmer and a lot thicker. You can't see through it as much unless you stretch it out and see how you can see my fingers. So I, that's why I do the, the triple, because it makes it thicker and, yeah. Um, with the... With the this the smallest size which is kind of a scarf type thing I find that two um, balls of yarn usually do it with this with the second size maybe th three to four the next one up um, the next one up I used four and it wasn't long enough, so I would I would at least do five or six, and then the next one at least six or seven rolls to get any significant length that would be usable. But it's really up to you. So that's the start of this, and I hope that it was helpful. And yeah, please leave comments and video responses below telling me what you thought or your tutorials on something like this. And I hope you ha all have a good day.